how does this fresh take on Cheaper by the Dozen differ from previous adaptations? Uh, this, this adaptation differs because there's a lot of diversity. We are truly a blended family in every way that you can imagine, racially diverse. We are socioeconomically diverse, all in one family, culturally diverse. Uh, we are a blended family. We had each been married to previous, you know, uh, our, our former spouses, had children with them, had children of our own, and then we had to figure out how to co-parent and make all of this beautiful chaos work and sing. And why is this such a timeless story? I think any story about family that centers family and figuring out ways of making families work, I think everyone can relate to it. We, whether you're close to your family or you have a big family or a small family or a chosen family, you can relate to some of the joys and challenges of what family brings, which I think is relatable across the world. And what does this film say about families today? And then I think it maybe expand on like how it's like a modernized version of family life as well. Yeah, I think we've we've overused that phrase traditional family. Uh, I don't think that's ever really existed except to shame folks. So what this movie does is it calls in all families, families that come in every shape, size, configuration, chosen families, um, extended families. Anyone that, that nurtures and cares for others, um, that's a family. And all families of, of every shape, size, color, creed should be celebrated. And I believe that this movie brings us all in. We re-examine what it is to be a family. We re-examine what's really, truly important. Um, but we've updated it. We've, we, we talk about some important topics um, and we keep it completely relevant. Uh, technically relevant, culturally relevant, um, pop culture relevance. Um, I, I think there's a little something for everyone to, to see themselves reflected on screen in this movie. And do you have a lot in common with your character? And if so, how difficult was that to portray on screen? And then also, going on that, are there similarities between you and your character that you can relate to? And then I think you can also throw in like how you're really different as well. Yeah. So. I play Zoe Baker, a mom of, you know, nine, ten, depending on what point of the movie you're at. She has a lot of kids. Uh, she's a she's an entrepreneur. They they have this restaurant. Her, you know, her husband is passionate about his sauce and they're trying to figure out how to balance ambition and being present and, and what's enough, really, right? And what does Zoe deserve? What what should she be able to expect um, out of her life? And, and, and what of her dreams and, and her wants and needs. Um, me, as a mom, I, have a, I wear a thousand hats. I have a number of different businesses. I'm also an entrepreneur. I'm also still trying to figure it out. I, have, uh, I am the matriarch of a very large blended family. Um, there's always something happening. You know, there's always beautiful chaos going on. But making sure I, I have time for myself and my own dreams and my own ambitions uh, is, is a challenge. And, and you, do, you never really want to feel like a bad mom or that you're failing, but it's hard. And you, don't wanna, you also don't want to give up all of yourself. You still want to recognize yourself when you look in the mirror. And that's a challenge, I think, for, for, for moms uh, you know, all across you know, the world. Um, and I also think for a lot of moms who are mothering uh, without having physically given birth, which is what I, I did for many, many years, um, there are many kinds of mothers who, who are, are called upon to mother and nurture others. And it's always a balancing act, whether they, they came of your body or it's, it's, a, it's a role that you've, you've taken on and that you, you hold dear, near and dear and, and, and respect and find you know, completely fulfilling in a, in a different kind of way. That balancing act never really ceases to exist. So I, I do believe that there are many similarities of me, with me and Zoe, but where we differ, she takes the high road where I believe that the high road's empty because it's awful. I don't like it. I think sometimes when you turn the other cheek or or you take the high road, you're not, you're not really 
being it honest about the harm caused. And, 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 the, and the folks exhibiting poor behavior don't really understand the extent to which they have harmed someone. Uh, and, and we call it being, you know, showing grace or, or whatnot, but really you're also giving them permission to continue on and not really face any kind of real consequence. Um, and I do believe that there is a way to show that there are consequences for poor actions without canceling someone, but r rather calling them in. But I think people confuse cancer culture with consequences. And what was it like filming with all these kids? Maybe like what was good about it and what was kind of challenging? Uh, you know, filming with so many kids and so many different personalities who have varying degrees of experience in the industry, it kind of took me back to when I first started and, and all of the things I found really interesting and the questions that I had. And I, I could see myself, you know, in, in some of these kids and I, you know, you got to give some a little extra, you know, and you got to always make sure you take the time to answer you know, questions not just about acting, but about what everyone does around set. And, and you know, qu just questions about life and being open and, and um, creating a, a safe space for kids to talk to you about anything. And, uh, but some of the challenges, that's a lot of kids and animals. Um, and you, you know, especially with some of the younger kids, they can only work for so many hours a day. So making sure they were focused, making, making sure they were prepared uh, to, to come in, do the job, but also not make them robots or, you know, deny them fun. It was a challenge to say, you know, the least. And why is Disney Plus the perfect home for the new Cheaper by the Dozen? I think Disney Plus is the perfect home for the new, I don't want to say improved, but the new and different Cheaper by the Dozen uh, because everyone has access to it. You don't have to leave your house to enjoy a family, friendly, great, funny, heartwarming uh, film that everyone in your family can relate to. And just for fun, who do you think would struggle more with uh, that many kids you or Dwayne? I would struggle the most <laughs> with that many kids. I, I look at leaving for work as like my peace. Um, it's like I leave chaos and generally work is, has a little bit more order. Um, and people listen to me there, it's weird. Uh, you know, in, in this one it was, you know, it's like chaos to chaos. And D, you know, always had a large family at all times and grew up with brothers, like all, you know, everyone is like sharing a room. So I think he's better equipped for more chaos than I. Slating that this is a Disney generic. And how does this fresh take on Cheaper by the Dozen differ from previous adaptations? Well, it's a 2022 version. You know, it's a blended family. Um, it's uh, it's um, there, there's uh, kids uh, on on doing TikTok dances, and um, uh, Kenya Barris wrote it, who's a genius writer behind shows like Blackish and Mixedish, and um, it 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 really, it, while still being a family comedy, has the the uh, the sense to take on um, what it's like to be a blended family, not just. Uh, two different races, uh, um, in fact, multiple races, but um, uh, a disabled child, um, a discussion of a child's uh, exploring their sexuality. Um, a, my my ex-wife in the film is battling depression. Um, so just a lot of m mature topics that might not be in, a, in an earlier year's version, but but would be pretty uh, crazy to live leave out of a 2022 version. So... Um, I think that's the the, the, the biggest um, difference is that it's a it's a, it's a modern take on on the beloved story. And why is this such a timeless story? I think people can just really relate to the themes of of a big family, even if they're not in a big family. You know, it, it, they they take it all as an exaggerated, heightened version of their own family. You know, uh, you, you you everyone who's a parent. I'm sure battles uh, work life and family life and following their dreams, but at the same time making sure they're spending enough time and being a, a good enough parent. And then you then you go, okay, well imagine you had ten and two dogs and two ex exes and uh, and a full time restaurant to run. It's so exaggerated and extreme that I think people find the the humor in it and they re and they relate to it. And what does this film say about families today? 
What does this film say about families today? I think that um, families come in all shapes and sizes and colors and sexual orientations and, um, and um, that this film reflects um, the modern family. Um, that's not to say that every family is, is blended, but uh, that there's all different types of, of individual souls growing up in, in, in a family. And this film celebrates um, letting those children develop into whomever they, they truly are. Obviously, being a parent to them and guiding them and, and making sure they behave and stay in line, um, but at the same time, letting them grow in to, to whoever they want to be. And were you attracted to playing the role of a father with not, with ten children? Uh, yeah, I was attracted to playing the role of, of a father with ten children because I love kids, and I knew they weren't mine, so I could hand them off at the end of the day. Um, I got to act opposite the the beautiful Gabrielle Union and um, and, uh, and 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 just laugh all day with these kids. It just and then of course Kenya's script, which is so brilliant because. It's not one of those movies that parents have to roll their eyes at and go, oh, I have to suffer through this, this movie that my kids want to watch. It's, it's got laughs for, for adults on every single page. So I, I think that uh, adults are going to love it just as much as their kids. And what was it like filming with all these kids? Um, what was it like filming with all these kids? It, you know, it, most of the time it was a lot of laughter. Sometimes we had to wrangle them, Gabby and I, uh, a, a bit uh, and do a little good cop, bad cop because the younger ones just really wanted to wrestle and play around and touch everything. <laughs> but, um, but we had a lot of laughs. And finally, why is Disney Plus the perfect home for the new Cheaper by the Dozen? Disney Plus is the best home for Cheaper by the Dozen because guess what? You don't have to go anywhere. You can turn it on March 18th in your living room. Gather the kids, get some popcorn, and flip it on. And the whole family can watch it together on Disney Plus March 18th. This Cheaper by the Dozen is different from its previous incarnations because we're really taking advantage of the opportunity to show how much families have changed in the past 20 years, in the past 70 years since the original version. Um, and our definition of family, our understanding of family has just expanded and grown and gotten richer. So I hope this will be a movie for this generation to see themselves. Awesome, our next question is, why does Cheaper by the Dozen have such a timeless appeal? I think Cheaper by the Dozen has a timeless quality because people love seeing their own families reflected back at them. The things that are different about other families is just so fun to laugh with and relate to and just see ourselves at our best and our most chaotic, being parents, loving our kids, getting through the challenges of our day. It just makes our own life just funnier and lighter to get to sit together and cozy up and watch families like ourselves. What was it like filming with all these kids? It was a huge treat filming with the kids. It had its crazy chaotic moments, but mainly their energy was so infectious. The truth they bring to their roles, the way they just naturally show their personalities and their exuberance. It was wonderful fun. One challenge about working with all the kids is that because of all their different ages, they all have very strict amounts of time that they can work. And there's an expression called pumpkining that comes from Cinderella, where when a child is about to be whisked away because their time is up, someone shouts, they're pumpkining, they're pumpkining. And we had so many kids pumpkining at all different times. It was like Halloween on stage. What does this film say about families today? I think that this film shows us a lot of reality about families today because I think we all get caught up in this notion of we need more success, a bigger career, a bigger house, more sneakers for our kids. And this movie really shows us the reality, which is that our kids actually want more time, more energy, more attention, more family time from us. 
And I hope people really watch that and take that away. Tell us what makes this blended family story different from the others we have seen play out on TV and film. One thing that I'm really proud of in our blended family story is that we show the challenges of having exes present in everyone's lives. I think in a lot of movies those are regarded as complicated, challenging characters and they're just not on screen or they're sort of negative cartoonish representations. And while our characters, our exes are definitely foils for our main characters, they also are great parents who are all co-parenting and all loving their kids and all doing right by each other, which I just think is such a great, um, ambitious, aspirational version of what it means to be in a blended family. And finally, why is Disney Plus the perfect home for the new Cheaper by the Dozen? I think Disney Plus is the perfect place for Cheaper by the Dozen because I love family movie nights. As a mom, I love having a family movie night and cozying up. Our movie actually has a family movie night in the middle of the movie. So to have the chance to cozy up with your family and watch another family have a movie night, it's just like this beautiful little hall of mirrors. And to have the chance of we're home, we're getting cozy, we're watching Cheaper by the Dozen just seems like the perfect way to watch. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released.